Turkey's Baykar company has begun ground tests of its Kizilola drone, described as the country's first unmanned fighter aircraft. This would appear to be aimed at a range of combat roles and is also supposedly being developed for operations from aircraft carriers. The Kizilola has been developed by Baykar, which also developed Bayraktar TB2, as well as the larger Bayraktar Akinsi. The Kizilola is a very different proposition, however, claimed to be supersonic, having a degree of reduced observable characteristics, and tailored for the kinds of air combat missions typically undertaken by manned fighter jets. Currently powered by a single Ukrainian-made Evchenko Progress turbofan engine, the Kizilola fighter drone has a Canard Delta configuration of the kind seen on some other reduced observable combat aircraft designs, including China's stealth fighter J-20 and mysterious Dark Sword drone. The use of canards is a trade-off between low observability and maneuverability, although some steps can be taken to limit their impact on the radar signature. The tail surfaces are made of inclined vertical stabilizers. As per the technical requirements, the Kizilola should have a range of 5 to 6 hours, a combat range of 1,000 kilometers, and a service altitude of 10,600 meters. Maximum takeoff weight is 6,000 kg, including 1,500 kg of payload. This load will include disposable stores carried in the internal weapons bay, which further retains its stealth characteristics. The weapons are likely to include examples of a wide range of precision air-to-ground munitions and air-to-air -air missiles produced by the Turkish industry. The early versions of the Kizilola featured an Evchenko Progress AI-25 TLT non-afterburning turbofan, which is expected to be replaced by an Evchenko Progress AI-322F with afterburning capability in future versions, which should ensure supersonic performance. Even with a non-afterburner engine, the Kizilola should offer impressive drone performance with a top speed close to Mach 1. Ultimately, there is a plan for a twin-engine version with a pair of AI-322FS for improving its performance. In its initial form, the engine exhaust is decidedly non-stealthy, although it's feasible that low observable characteristics could be improved by refining this area, something that Russia is doing with its Okotnik drone. This aircraft has features to reduce the radar cross-section from some angles such as the fuselage chine lines, but obviously high performance is more important than low observation. This is not something we commonly see in unmanned combat aerial vehicles, with the possible exception of the MQ-28 Ghost Bat, at least to some extent. Unlike the TB-2 and Akinsi, the fast and high-flying Kizilola is planned to have air-to-air -air combat capabilities as well as intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, and strike operations. However, few details are available about the avionics and general mission architecture required to perform air combat missions, let alone the more straightforward functions. The drone will reportedly be equipped with some type of active electronically scanned array radar. More broadly, it is unclear whether the General Kizilola concept is based on a loyal wingman-type drone that accompanies manned fighters, whether the drone will be controlled from a ground station, or even if it will be expected to shoot down hostile aircraft with some degree of autonomy. Development of Kizilola started in 2013, although the project was not revealed to the public until July 2021, when concept studies were presented. The first flight will take place next year. The taxi and other ground tests have been completed. According to Baykar's chief technology officer, the first takeoff roll test was planned to be conducted at slower speeds, but we exceeded that limit and the first autonomous taxi and takeoff roll test had been successfully accomplished. According to Baykar's general manager, the cost of Kizilomo will not be high. We will be able to produce much more at a lower cost. If so, Baykar could launch a combat drone that is within reach of customers who may not be able to afford similar American products or otherwise be unable to obtain export licenses for these types of high-end combat UAVs. So far, few countries have gone so far as to test drones in this category, with China being a notable exception. It's not clear if the overall cost is low enough for Kizilola to be considered attributable, even if only for certain scenarios, though it's certainly a possibility. Another key aspect of the Kizilola is its claimed short takeoff and landing capability, which is said to allow it to operate from small carrier-based aircraft such as the Turkish Navy's amphibious assault ship Anadolu, which features a ski jump takeoff ramp at the bow. Reports from Turkey indicate that the military initially wants to operate the smaller Bayraktar TB-2 drones from Anadolu, and it is unclear what level of modifications the ship and Kizilomo will require to allow the larger and heavier drones to go to sea. Certainly, the landing gear of the prototype Kizilomo seen undertaking ground tests appears to be far too lightweight to cope with the rigors of deck launches and recoveries. 
It remains unclear if the Kizil only in its basic form will have the required thrust for a ski jump launch without catapult assistance. Baykar officials have previously said the Anadolu would be equipped with arrestor cables to recover the drones. To give UAVs takeoff and landing ability on aircraft carriers, their structure must be strong because they are subjected to very high G-shocks. Overall, the Kizaloma is an interesting approach to designing a high-speed tactical UCAV. It appears to combine the characteristics typical of a scaled-down signature design with an airframe and propulsion unit that should provide high levels of performance. With later versions offering supersonic performance, this would increase its survivability against various air and ground-based air defenses. For Turkey, a drone of this type would be a useful way to solve the growing problem of the mass of fighters when Ankara was excluded from the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter program and the question hangs in the proposed agreement to buy more F-16s. At this stage, however, the question remains to what extent Baykar can configure the drone to perform air-to-air -air missions. While clearly an aspiration, this involves a level of flight control software, command and control architecture, and computing power that may be beyond Turkey, despite its considerable achievements in developing more conventional ISR and strike drones. On the other hand, even if the Kizaloma is initially limited to reconnaissance and assault missions, its low cost makes it a very attractive force multiplier for both the Turkish military and other customers. For more dangerous roles, such as suppressing defenses or attacking heavily defended targets, Kizaloma can be an attractive choice, especially in its later versions that promise true fighter-like performance.